Live from New York. It's the show that is now a Jared Goff guy. <laughs> perfect game. <laughs> There's something, like, one thing to have a perfect game, another thing, like, I also caught a pass. That yeah. has to be beyond That perfect. was nice. Yeah. What an easy catch either. No, it wasn't. Yeah. It was a good throw a yep. and yep. catch. And also, in the perfect game, doesn't even count the throw he threw on that play because it's backwards. So, really, 19 of 19. Impressive. Is that true? Yeah, because it was, or else you'd be in double pass. That's illegal. Know your sports. Huh. Yeah. Uh, we're starting with the Lions roaring and scoring. Well done. <laughs> Detroit puts up 42 points in the process of giving the Seahawks their first loss. San Francisco at one, NFC odds. Lions at two. Eagles, who are not good, tied with the Vikings, who are excellent, <laughs> or three. Then it's the Cowboys and in the Big drop-off, by the way. From three to five. Ah, 650 point. to 1200 is a big drop off. Are the Lions. Disrespectful to the Packers. But sorry, go ahead. Packers. Uh, Just a little disrespectful. Yeah, they lost to the Eagles and they lost to the Vikings. So yeah. they already won. No, I understand. Just got I'm their talking about being 12 to 1, but go ahead. Don't worry. Are the Lions the best team in the NFC? One of the things you have started to like to say, and I really, I hate to say this, but that I wish I had come up with. Oh, I was um, we're going to be here for a while. Is. <laughs> I'm an evidence guy. Yeah. That is, it's just a good, easily digestible way to be like, that's how I view things. Um, the Lions have the best case of anyone that they're the best team. Hmm. The evidence would say they're the best team in within the context of the evidence can't just be who has the best record. We know that. There has to be a little more nuance than simply put the standings from 1 through right. 16. They were excellent last year. They filled in whatever little holes they had last year. Those appear to be good additions that they have made and young players getting better like Aiden Hutchinson, right. like Jamis, Jamison Williams, who was a superstar collegiate player. Yeah. They right. dealt with injury, suspension, right. and now we're seeing him. Everyone knew they had an excellent offensive line. And I should say, I whipped on this game entirely. I said I thought it would be close and low scoring. Instead, it was kind of close, but super high scoring, and the Lions controlled it. One of the reasons I thought was because ah, the Lions without their center, Frank Ragnow, didn't matter. Offensive line could deal with anyway. Yep. They have outstanding weapons. They are healthier, Ragnow's injury notwithstanding, than some of the other major contenders. They have a quarterback who has experience in the biggest games, even if he didn't play well in that Super Bowl. Yep. We've seen him play in multiple playoffs. And they have just enough playmakers on defense. They didn't have Branch last night. They'll have mm -hmm. him back. Hutchinson's awesome. And so... Right now, they have the strongest argument of any team that this very moment wow. they're the best team in the NFC. You make a good point. You make a good argument because you include last year. All right, we always you take have it, to, especially to early in the yes. season. We take that into control, uh, consideration. San Francisco's banged up. Yep, and will continue to be banged up. It seems. My pick in the NFC was go, uh, Green Bay, and I see no reason not to feel good about my pick. Obviously, they just got Jordan Love back. Got stomped by Minnesota in the first half, came back. His first game back, I think he'll get better. So, I feel good about Green Bay. But I'm going to answer it for right now. Yeah, that's yeah. what like I was right doing as now. well. Yeah, it's okay. different than what will happen right, who in you four think? I, I think yep. Green Bay will get to the Super Bowl. But right now, I still would not go with Detroit. Who's you could that? get me if you want to include last year. I think the team that's playing the best right now in the NFC is Minnesota. Minnesota. I know you, I'm and here, here's the argument, Nick. Now, again, last year they weren't very good, so if you want to make that case. But this year, one, I think they played a tougher they, schedule. That They're undefeated. Un yes. Their schedule's which, been brutal. Right. They, so the teams they've beaten have a combined record of eight and eight, which doesn't sound great. But San Francisco, which we believe is a good team, is mm -hmm. two and two. And Green Bay, which, you know, we believe well, is a good team. But it also means those two teams two. are 8-4 and four when they're not playing Minnesota. Right, If you said right. they're 8-8, eight eight, that means they're 8-4 and four when they play anybody else. And then Houston. Yeah. And those three quarterbacks, Jordan Love, C.J. Stroud, Brock Purdy, they gave them problems. All right, so their defense is great. Uh, Detroit's teams that they've beaten are a combined 5-9. and nine. Yeah. All right, so – I uh, Minnesota's played the better schedule. Minnesota has the better record. And even though they've played a tougher schedule, their defense has been better. See, that's right. They lead the NFC in points allowed, or they have the fewest points allowed, which is 59. That's fourth in the entire league. And again, with that tough schedule, they're only allowing 14.8 points. Here's the uh, 
graphic of the offense and defense for the two teams. Minnesota scoring more points fourth in the and league allowing fewer. and allowing fewer again fourth in the league and remember tougher schedule you mentioned the weapons which obviously Detroit has great ones but so does Minnesota you know with yeah. Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison Aaron and Jones. they can run the ball with Aaron Jones Sam Darnold. What, Darnold look I he should be on pumpkin watch there's no doubt and I expect him at some point Definitely to turn pumpkin. into a pumpkin yeah. Yeah. But right now, he's playing great. Leads the league with 11 touchdowns. Leads the league in passer rating. Yeah. And he's doing what they're asking him, which isn't too much. It's yeah. just enough. Last year, Lions season ended. They allowed 27 points in the second half, 17 points in eight minutes, 413 yards. It's like, all right, we got to fix that. Did they fix their defense? No. Like you said, it's going to be close scoring. Uh, you thought it was going to be close. Geno can move the ball around. This year, Lions pass uh, defense yards per game. They're right around 260, which is 30th. Allowed 383 last night. That is a lot. Uh, it's most by any team this year. So until that gets fixed. So I don't think they have to have a great defense. I, I think they have to I think, they score I, think, I think they have to have an average defense. But that's overall that you, we can't just say just one part of it. You know, they, overall good defense, the run defense. I, right. I think they just have to have an average. Now they can't be the 30th pass defense. But I, Gino, I mean, the, Gino's playing well. I but he, he Minnesota's was, he's moving the up ball at, passing at ease. Yeah, they kind of took their foot off the, it. Well, okay. I mean, we're the, the, the uh, <laughs> well, so we're gonna have to start Jordan's talking. Again. Just Vikings one other thing, winning. just because you mentioned so much about the what the Vikings have done, I just want to throw up the Lions' schedule because okay. we're gonna find out. In I hate the early buy for them, but it is what it is. Right. Once they, if we can throw up their mm -hmm. schedule, man, five of the next six, four of the next five weeks, Dallas at Dallas at Minnesota. Forget Will Levis. At Green Bay, at Houston. That is brutality. And then that right hand column, depending on what you think of the Bears and what they are, that's no easy sli slide either. So I, if the Lions get to 11 wins, I think they will be as battle tested as any team in the league. And we're going to find out how good they really are in these next five weeks. At I mean, Dallas after a bye, the, it's pretty good for them, right? So, uh, well, it's so I actually Dallas, looked. I so, think. I mean, Dallas, right in the look ahead line, Dallas is a one point favorite. Huh. So, Dallas is a one point dog this week at Pittsburgh and then a one point favorite at home next week for whatever it's worth. So, I mean, right. Vegas saying that's a coin flip game, but at Dallas, at Minnesota, at Green Bay, at Houston, it's pretty tough Man, five I, weeks. I think i light Dallas up. Okay. No Micah. Uh, all right. I in agree. the process, Jared Goff, literally perfect, 18 for 18. <clears throat> 292 yards, two touchdowns, one receiving touchdown. Here's his numbers. First ever perfect completion game on over 10 attempts. Brew, is golf underrated? Look, I, he's kind of properly rated. Properly right. rated. That's yeah. what I wrote down, bro. I, I, but I am going to make another case that he is underrated as well. He's clearly not the Mahomes, Lamar, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow level. Sure. Maybe. So that's where I think, and he's rated in that group, that sizable group below those guys, and I think that's where he should be. Where I think, Nick, he's underrated, I, I just think he, it was like everybody blamed him for the Rams not being able to win a Super Bowl. And I get that Including Sean, Mc Sean McVay. Yeah, right. And I get that Sean McVay is great, a great offensive mind, and he's clearly helped golf, but somebody had to throw those passes. All right, somebody had to make that offense click and be one of the best offenses in the league. And it was with Jared Goff. And we're seeing even, you may talk about this later, like we didn't give, Nick and I didn't give Tua a ton of credit. Well, look at them now. They look, you know, in Miami. So it just shows you that no matter how good you think Tua or Goff was, it takes a good quarterback, no matter who the coordinator is, what the system is, who the head coach is, to go out there and make it happen. And I don't think he got the credit for it. So, they And he they had that great offense. These were – I know he had Ty Gurley, who everybody gave a lot of yeah. the credit to. His receivers, best ones, Cooper Cup had not yet yeah. emerged. He was on the team. Robert Woods and Brandon Cooks, neither of whom's made a Pro Bowl. And with that good offense, with golf, yeah, players. they're good. But golf made it look yeah. great. And here, here's what I want to show you, this graphic. This is golf in Detroit compared to Stafford in, with the Rams. 
And golf Scotty beat completion percentage, TD to interceptions, slight, you know, has He's him slightly. Beat. And yards, passer rating, yards pass is close, but yeah. so I I do think so he the Super is, Bowl kind of skews that. Yeah, 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 no, I get it. Stafford won the Super Bowl, and two words, Jaquaski Tart. I'm just okay. saying, that, if he doesn't drop that ball, they don't get to the Super so, Bowl. All right, so I don't even. I, I think he's properly rated. I think that at the very, 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 very best. He's the seventh best quarterback in the league. At the very, 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 very worst, he's the 14th best quarterback in the league. I think most people would say he's around 10, so I think he's properly rated. But I really want to hear what Wilds has to say here because this is less about Jared Goff and more about Joe. Well, he's Burrow. the number one pick overall, right? Uh huh. Check. Uh, he went to Super Bowl and lost, right? Yeah. Check. Mm -hmm. Cool nickname. No. <laughs> cool haircut. <laughs> no. Kind of just average. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's the big differentiator. Here's the last three seasons, including the playoffs, of uh, Joe Burrow versus Jared Goff. Uh, Jared Goff has a better record. Uh, Burrow completes more passes, but passing yards goes to Jared Goff. Touchdowns to interceptions, rating. I would go to Goff. And passer rating, I would go to Goff. No one is willing to say that he's better than Joe Burrow, except the evidence can say that he's better than Joe Burrow. That's since Joe Burrow. They both have a, a very similar resume the marketing of Jared Goff not great the the idea that he has been stained that like McVay gave yes. up on him you left we won the Super Bowl I get it and now he's like in charge of a little engine that could Detroit Lions if he gets over that hump I think it could be interesting so, to see if he could slide around with Joe and Burrow and I don't want to make fun of Joe Burrow they win I've been Super labeled Bowl, as a yeah, Joe Burrow a hater just because I'm putting up full screens well, over Jared Goff's out here dominating Joe Burrow can has I, won one game against the Panthers okay can I just say something real quick yeah and t I don't want to put words in your mouth because I hate when people do that to me I don't think you think Jared Goff is underrated I just think you think Joe Burrow is wildly overrated. Those are your words, not mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's, that's what I think is actually a player. It feels like the people that are making the narratives are just more fond sure. of Joe Burrow than they are Jared Goff. Yeah, you left out one other thing. What? No, stop that. What? Well, he's, how many games outdoors does he have this year? I, I'm just telling you, the, the other thing, you mentioned Joe Burrow has cool haircuts and adult-sized hands, so people use the other thing against him. They just do. Perfect game. Fair or not. I'm just telling Catch you. you. Didn't even, was he even wearing gloves, bro? <laughs> no. No gloves. No, you know what's gloves. a big giveaway? When the quarterback puts on two gloves. <laughs> All right. yeah. Be on the lookout. All right. Dolphins last night. Uh, they are not a good team. No. Uh, Tyreek, unhappy. Wait, two just for MVP? one second. Ah, Pro football talk. Here comes Florio floating around an idea. A Tyreek Hill trade from the Dolphins back to the Chiefs would not be easy to pull off. I like that. Like, <laughs> oh, okay, so what are you saying? Uh, Florio, the idea is percolating, maybe just among Florio and his friends, that the Dolphins could slash should just trade Hill back to the Chiefs. I thought you were going to hate this idea as you went through the cap, but you're – well, the cap's head doable. in your heart, kind of. No, the cap's fight. doable the, because Tyreek Hill's bonus—it's bonus money mostly, and so it's like it's very. The cap would not be. Is there it, any financial downfall to it for the Chiefs? For like, the Chiefs in the future? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, well, they would have to make sure they have fifteen million dollars for him next year, that's and then, you know what I mean? Right. But like that, which is nothing. <laughs> like right. yeah, that's what. Exactly. No, the the big cap piece of it is the dead cap hit Miami would take by trading him, but it would be because this is a lost season. For, first. Let me put on my fake news hat for a oh, moment. Okay. Not not fake news. My my the hat is fake. The, the hat is fake. Is, the news is the real. news is real. That's right. a great tagline. <laughs> the, the hat is fake. The news is real. I think we just might have solved trust in media wilds. Let's work on that after the show. Um, optimism is too strong of a word, but there is there is percolating questions about whether or not Rasheed Rice is actually out for the year. And they don't think they're going to know until probably Monday. Today's Tuesday. And so the, what was initially on field, essentially diagnosed as torn ACL, that has not been able to been confirmed. And so I, he's certainly out for at least a month. But, and, and my guess, and I think right. right now if they had to put money on it, they'd say probably out for the year. But it is, they have not been able to determine the guy tore his ACLs out for the year. So let's just, okay. so, that's but, but, so that's, well, it's, it's it not awful good. news yet, right. so we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. I believe when you're trying to be a 10, 15, 20-year dynasty, 
You have to make sober-minded decisions, recognize the value of draft picks and those contracts, be reminded of the fact the Chiefs built an entire super young, excellent defense, aside from Chris Jones, through the draft. Mm -hmm. It's what has mm -hmm. kept them afloat when the offense has been figuring things out. They've traded away Tyreek Hill since then. They are 7-0 in the playoffs. They have not lost a playoff game. Mahomes has won two Super Bowl MVPs and won a league MVP. With that said, oh, my God, I'd love him back. Yeah, pretty, pretty <laughs> I, I mean, I would break so many of my other rules about team building to go for a three-peat because they have hit on so many of the young defensive players in the draft. I feel like if you had to give up a first and a third for Tyree Kill, they could sustain that. You know what I mean? And they could make it work financially. And then even if you get amazing Rasheed Rice news. All of a sudden, you have a perfectly built, dynamic receiving core out of thin air. Yeah. Because Tyreek's your one, Rasheed's your possession guy, and Xavier Worthy is your you know rookie speedster, and all of a sudden, Tyreek kills the second fastest player on the team. So, I, the, I, I mean, I, again, I don't – this would involve Miami waving the white flag on the season. That but by Miami, be, yeah. they should do it. And they might say, well, but but not for next season. I think we – Brew, I didn't feel like Miami was going to be contending with Tua, how they looked no, again. It was just I, seven I quarters they the of the playoffs, season. But I didn't so, think I, that, yeah. I mean, the, the, if Rasheed's out for the year, the Chiefs are going to go after somebody. If Miami's even a tiny bit open to it, I would probably pay 110 cents on the dollar to have yes. him back. I don't know if Miami will do it. It looks like Tua's coming back this year. I mean, that's that's yeah, seems but what to be if they're the one and seven? But then I think they might think for the future. That's their yeah. whole thing is offense. Yeah. They, they have no defense. We know they're soft. They that's what they got to fix. But offensively with Tua, they click. They didn't look great in the game and a half that he played. But still, we know you it figure works. in you give up Tyreek. You still got Waddle and you got the running backs. But, you know, but for the Chiefs, I mean, come on. What are we talking about? It's a no brainer. I mean, my goodness, like. A three-peat obviously is never guaranteed, but this would be as close as you could get. Like, if they got him, everything we talk about with the Chiefs, even as they're 4-0 and have beaten some of the best teams in the league already, is the offense. And, it, and it's all and, solved by Right. This I mean, there's, like, it would open things up for Kelsey underneath. It opens things up for Worthy. He can help Worthy grow and mature. It opens things up for the run know, game. As a football well, player. Well, as a football player. Right, right. As a football <laughs> player. Right. But I'm just like, it, it, yes, if they can I, get Tyreek Hill. There would also be some poetry to it. He also wants to come back. Oh, he so wants to come back. Like it's, it He misses was, it so much. 2022, late October, Kadarius Tony. Catches a Super Bowl, uh, catches a touchdown in the Super Bowl, has a long yeah. run in the Super Bowl. 2023, October 18th, McCall Hardman, game-winning touchdown. Well, they're going. Listen, I mean, somebody. Yeah, I mean, I and we can talk more about this maybe in the next segment. Amari Cooper is Chiefs fans out there, and I know it, there's not a lot left these days. Uh, you're rooting for the Chiefs. You're rooting against the Browns every week. Oh yeah, because you right. want the Browns. If you can't to, get Tyree, You want the Browns to wave the white flag because Amari is super cheap. Fits one year deal. You Thanks wouldn't be mortgaging so. any part of your future. Mm -hmm. That's the and we already know Amari was cool with leaving. Amari yeah. was like an Instagram post about going to San Francisco. But if you can get Tyreek, oh, oh my, God. it wouldn't be good for me and my pick with the Ravens, but it would be great. It'd be good for the <laughs> it'd NFL. Be, it'd be, good for the be show, exciting. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.